Okay, so this is either part two of like the revamp of 2023 budget stuff. You can see part one that I filmed and edited or filmed and uploaded. It's uh, linked down in the description box below. Um, or this is part one because if you're just here for the Three Rivers content. So um, I did kind of our budget revamp for 2023. And one of the things that I talked about in there was back in October of 2022, we kind of realized that for this season of life, we just really need to utilize the food pantry. I need to figure out how to do that in such a way that works well with our diet and our budget. I have $250 as of right now budgeted for each month that we can squeeze. Now, that's if I can make $325 a month. We're not sure. If not, that means that's that money that has to come out of savings. If you're so confused by this, check that other video out. The point is to kind of rotate what we have. And um, I have jars here of things that I've canned over um, the last several months that um, as we go into the next season, I'm going to need those jars. And it also tells me like what we actually use versus what I can't. So couple things that I learned going into that, going into the Three Rows Challenge, um, we're uh, heading, what is today? Today is the 20th, so we're heading into kind of the last eight days. Wow, that's weird to think about. Last week-ish of February, and you know, the Three Rivers Challenge goes for two months. The Three Rivers Challenge, Jessica basically has the idea of you eat your pantry. You can either do a low spend, no spend, whatever. The main goal is to eat your pantry. Um, so the fact that I do have purchases doesn't mean that I broke the rules or do anything of that because I was trying to set my own rules. And my rules were try to per or <laughs> try to rotate through this food so that it didn't go to waste. And also too, so I would know what our family used. Most of all, learn how to utilize food better and get an idea or save as much money as we could. Okay, so a couple of things that I learned that we used, we go through quickly. That would be canned mushrooms, um, my home canned green beans, which I was not expecting. Like when we got it, we were like, oh, yep, nope, tastes like canned green beans. Still went through that much faster than I expected. So um, the mushrooms, the green beans, and I didn't write it down, but I thought about it today. I was like, oh yeah, we went through that quick. Um, apple rings, so the dried apples. Those were the three things that basically we ran out of as quickly as they pretty much came in. Um, so as I was noticing that we were dwindling quickly, I like, made sure that some mushrooms lasted longer because I haven't found a good mushroom um, deal. And nope, the apple rings are gone. Things that have not pretty much gone at all are the dehydrated grapes. Even though the kids love them, apparently they are gripped out, which I don't get. And ironically next to that are the canned sweet potatoes. Um, this past week we uh, opened up the canned zucchini. I'll be honest, that is one that I was kind of worried about being really mushy. Um, not as bad as I thought. And so that one's now getting rotated through quickly. Um, but a lot of the canned tomato products that I was expecting haven't really touched. And um, a lot of our home canned um, jams. We haven't really touched again. We're just, I'm finding out we're just not big jam people. So, um, that's good to note. Um, we had one pretty bad fail of things that I canned, and that would be the dill pickles. They are salty. And I don't really know what to do with those. Um, so, yeah. Other things that I'm just kind of keeping in mind for next year. Not only really something I can grow, but we'll see. All right. 
in kind of moving forward into the next month, um, one of the things that I've been doing, of course, one of the things that I've been doing was just kind of keeping a list of things that I am, you know, using up or running out of and um, something to stock up on. Now, a couple of these have been because we've been at the store and it's like, okay, we're kind of out, we need it, so pick it up. That that kind of um, keeps me in, intact again for the next time that I do this. In terms of the Three Rivers Challenge, which is, you know, try not, for Jessica's try not to go to the grocery store and basically utilize their uh, food pantry during that time. I'm gonna go forward basically trying to use up all the food that I have or the meat that I have in my freezer which we'll talk here in just a minute about that and um, again really rotate the food pantry stuff that I've kind of set aside I'm not storing expired food expired food is not bad again but the nutrients break down um, and then, like I said, trying to use up that food because I need to empty out jars because as we head into, you know, the 23 season, especially the gardening season, there are some things that I would like to um, prep and can, like, I don't know, green beans. I know I used a ton of food, but I think the food pantry gave us enough food that I didn't rotate as much through as I would have liked. I did make a ton of baked things. Um, a ton. Um, and I'm not saying that that was bad. I just don't know if that was really good. I know that my um, health, for lack of a better word, um, hasn't been all that great. Um, it's just been more kind of draggy and that usually means that my carb intake was pretty high and my husband's um, depression has been pretty bad and that usually means that his sugar has been higher his carb intake has been higher and we just haven't been eating as well even though it's been homemade it just means it's just not as um, healthy for us so um, in trying to use up things like I don't know sweet potatoes <laughs> Um, uh, the best way I could figure out how to use all these sweet potatoes was to mash them up and put them as a replacement for pumpkin. Whew. And so that meant more like muffins and breads and cakes and, uh, um, I pulled out, I made fries. Everybody keeps telling me to make sweet potato fries. When you've had sweet potatoes three or four times a week, including fries, there's just so much you can handle before you're just done. So, um, I talked about where I'm trying to empty out the freezer. My son has, uh, works on a farm. And the farmer has, uh, graciously allowed us to purchase one of his cows at an amazing cost. It would be like three sixty a pound for the beef, no matter the cut. And it would mean that I need to get the freezer cleaned out pretty well. So that's kind of why I'm continuing this on further. Um, if you all recall the grocery haul video that I did, um, it was the Aldi and it had the beef that I found on sale for a fantastic price. Obviously we get to kind of splurge a little bit and have some more beef and I know my husband's really sad about that. I wish I could tell him that we're just not gonna eat as much beef, but I'm not gonna deny him that as I am sugar. I made a brief list, I'll do an overlay video because I know it's hard to uh, read my handwriting while I'm shaky and jittery and all that. But it's Eat the Pantry and I'm focusing on the canned goods. So things that we have gotten from the food pantry, I would like to kind of really dwindle these down and the reason for that is, um, again, more shelf space available for the other stuff. And also because a lot of times these things are expired. And again, the nutritional value has depleted. But 
that is not at the expense of my canned stuff. Um, so our, the Eat the Pantry focus on the canned goods. Um, stuff that I've canned, I like to focus on the sweet potatoes. I'm going to be honest, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> like I already know, it's just we have stuff out in the garage that needs to be used up. So I wrapped them in newspaper and um, kind of preserved them in that way. And those need to be used up before the canned. And like I said, this past week I've been trying to bring in more of the sweet potatoes. And mm -mm, mm -mm. So I might be able to do like one sweet potato meal a week, but at that point, that's going to be it. Um, the pasta sauce. I had a bunch of pasta sauce, a bunch of tomato soups, and all of that kind of thing. And, um, they're not getting eaten. Now, some of that is, I was so excited, I canned enough salsa to have one a week for the next year until I could do it again. And then I had tooth issues. <laughs> So we have not had as many chips and salsa as I anticipated dental things. And that's actually pure selfishness on my part because I love chips and salsa so much that um, I didn't really even want to open a can of salsa or have chips on hand because I would not be able to eat it. So we'll see if I can do the chips and salsa, but I can do other things with the salsa. Other than salsa chicken, if you guys have any other suggestions for that. I'm all ears. Some other things that we have canned and could be totally put into rotation are the turkey and chicken that I canned, the actual meat. Uh, I follow all of the guidelines, but um, yeah, uh, if we do the chicken, I know I'm getting low outside, so I'll probably be turning into turning to my canned stuff. Um, so some of the meal ideas based on the stuff that I have, we have canned pork from the food pantry. And I'll be honest, that one kind of freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, is how is that different from the canned chicken or the canned beef? I don't know. It's just, okay. Um, so I'm thinking pork enchiladas. Um, since we're not big gluten family, I've been doing it a little bit more. And I really need to pull back again. Um... <laughs> Pulled pork sandwiches just don't work. Um, so if there's any other suggestions because gluten-free items right now are like $7. It's ridiculous. So I don't want to pay that. So I don't want to do pulled pork sandwiches. Um, so any other thing I'm open to. Um, lasagna soup is one that I have. That'll use up some lasagna noodles that I have. I'll use up some cabbage that I have or sauerkraut. I can do either one. And um, it'll use up some tomatoes that I have. Another thing that we're going to put into rotation is um, soup. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it like two times a week. We have soup for lunch um, or whatnot. Or if we just have one day a week where we do soup for dinner. And I just, I have different um, things in the freezer. So I have like a batch of minestrone soup. I have a batch of tomato soup and I have a batch of corn chowder and we pull those three batches out and that would be enough for you know two people per serving container and the little ones would probably have a little bit less so we just kind of do that on rotation so that's another thought that I have um, there's a ton of tomato soups in there so that'll probably be the big one um so yeah, okay, let's kind of talk about costs. So I'm actually beginning a series and the series is going to basically show you like at $10 a month, what you can do to basically put aside key ingredients for stuff like pantry challenges. So pantry challenges aren't necessarily something that after one pantry challenge you go grocery shopping for months and then you have another pantry challenge um i think our tribe of many is kind of doing something like that in the sense where they try to buy double the items one month and then try to go two months without grocery shopping um our small footprint does it where basically she lives 
four hours away, I think, from the nearest big town where she can go grocery shopping. So she's worked it to where eight weeks at a time. She doesn't need to go grocery shopping. I would like to get to that point. Um, but I'm also knowing that in this time, in this season, I really kind of need to focus on the sales and learn to be very vigilant and diligent in that. Again, check that. It all goes back to that um, Money Management Monday video that I just made. It's down below. Um, those are just going to be super, super helpful to me, I think, right now. Um, maybe not so much because I'm not trying to focus on finding clearance meat. So maybe, maybe until that's all done. I don't know. I don't know. We're not going to think about that right now. <laughs> We're going to move on. Um, so, but in terms of pantry challenges, for the most part, this doesn't apply to every single person, but for the most part, when you go grocery shopping, you kind of get an idea of what you're gonna need for that week for meals. You do that over several weeks and you'll accumulate stuff in your pantry that you just haven't used. So when you do a pantry challenge, you're focusing on those items to use up and trying not to go to the grocery store. Again, with Jessica's Three Rivers Challenge um, that she does between January and February of trying not to go to the grocery store, those are her rules. For other people, they do it as a low spend so that they get their fresh produce. But again, your purpose in that is to clean out that pantry so that there's not food waste, so you can save money and whatnot. So one of the common things that I hear is, well, is it really saving money? You know, because now you're going to have to replenish all that. Again, I'm going to go back to when you grocery shop for several weeks at a time and you accumulate these things that maybe you're not using up all the time, as a general rule, those are really good opportunities to make sure that the pantry cleans out. I'm going to use real life examples here. I've been helping a couple of uh, families in my community kind of clean out their house and take care of just get back on their feet after life and whatnot. One of the things that I noticed is that they're trying really, really hard to live within the certain budget allotted for the groceries. But when I go into their pantry, I keep thinking there is so much here that you could do that would, you know, while you're trying to focus on what you need every single week, if you utilize these things, there's less that you have to purchase. And no, not everybody is like that. But it does happen, and that's why a good pantry challenge is valuable. So when you're thinking about doing a huge pantry challenge once a year to, again, utilize those kinds of things, there's some things that are just going to, that you purchase on a regular basis that you're going to run out of. Things like your cooking oil, so for me, olive oil and butter. Those are ones that just run out more quickly. Again, I have more raw ingredients. More raw ingredients means like more use of oils and butter. Things that I don't think of like olives. I use olives all the time, but I don't purchase a lot necessarily at a time. A, it costs B, everything else. So adding a few extra olives in my grocery order, um, when I'm doing groceries thinking ahead to the next month, helps me later on um, just make those meals better for my pantry. Yes, I'm purchasing a little bit more, but $3, $4, $10 here, not spending $250 there. So the, the new series that I wanna do is going to go week by week by week, showing you what I'm going to spend at $10 putting away for the next pantry challenge. For me, I would actually prefer to do two times a year. So I like that it's January and February after the holidays. You kind of just want a good clean out, um, good time to kind of go through expired foods or going through all of the stuff you had canned. So again, it's a really good time. I love it and I love just being able to participate in the Three Rivers Challenge. 
Another time would be during the summer. Um, uh, for me, it would probably be like June because we always have a trip in July. So those are good. You know, it's good times to kind of basically get everything cleaned out for that time. So in putting aside these certain items, trying to keep it $10, that's $40 a month, roughly, sometimes maybe 50, depending on how you grocery shop. Um, you could just basically say, okay, I grocery shop once a month, so I'm gonna have $40 to stock up on those kinds of things. I'm gonna buy the oil, I'm gonna buy extra butter to put in the freezer, and I'm gonna buy two extra pounds of ground beef to put in the freezer. We'll say that's about 40. Again, those are things that you're not gonna touch until the pantry challenge that will just make that a little bit easier. It still makes it possible for the pantry challenge. Do it for a week, do it for two weeks, do it for the month. As a whole, it can be helpful and useful to you and your family to get things cleaned out so that at one point you're not going through and finding all this expired food that typically most people just throw out. Yes, I know not everybody does. Yes, I know that some people just donate to the food pantry because guess what? We get it. So that's kind of just all of my thoughts on this, kind of um, what the goals were going in, what the goals are going forward, what are some of the ways that I was like, okay, how does this save us money? Does this save us money? Yes, it does. Um, and then um, why would anybody want to do a pantry challenge like this? Um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Um, if there's any other way that um, I can answer any questions or help you in any other way about this, I know um, just things are a lot different than they were a few years ago. Um, inflation's a little bit higher. Everybody's pinching pennies as much as they can to just make things go a little bit further. And it's kind of scary, it's kind of new, but um, I really hope that this channel can give you some ideas that will help you and your family, that will give you encouragement because, I mean, for me, it's not just doing the hard things, but it's it's the continued encouragement to keep going, to keep trying. Um, I'm typically one that's like, oh, well, I failed. Oh, well, I'll throw up my hands. And those encouragements of, nope, get, get up, get trying, keep going. So that's kind of how I would like this to be. Um, all right, I will stop here. I thank you for all of the support, the love. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.